It is not just that later A, B that you see. It is not just that sound that you see, you hear. The later is a vehicle conveying the essence, the substance, the life, and the glory, the power of God. When you buy a bottle of mineral, it is not the bottle that is the mineral. The bottle is carrying the mineral, he said. Am I right? So the word of God, either in written form or as you're hearing it from me, speaking it in a sound form, is not just what you're hearing or what you're seeing. It is a vehicle that is carrying the fullness, the weight of God. How does the president of Nigeria rule Nigeria? He's not everywhere at the same time, but there are documents that carries what he has said. There are news that carries the power of the presidency. They say we have shifted the election they don't care if your marriage wedding was fixed on 18th of March. By reason of that decree, you hear it, you see it, your marriage is canceled. They catch you that day, you do your marriage inside Okere. Did the man come down to this place? No. Now you'll be foolish to say, let him come and tell me by himself. Are you getting? Let, let him let him come here and tell me by himself. You will hear it by force by the time they beat you like sister Berylin. Your head will open and you will hear it by force. So the word of God, the Bible you have, either in written form or when you hear it, understand that it goes beyond the book you have. It goes beyond the voice you're hearing. It is God himself talking to you. If I write a love letter to you and you get it, and you're reading it, and I'm not there, but you know you'll be smiling at some place where you need to smile. You will giggle where you need to giggle. But I'm not there. But as you're reading that thing, you're seeing me. You're hearing my voice. In 5G. Have you seen that advert? 5G, MTN, have you seen it? You have not seen it. Where have you been? Very soon. That's what's been happening. You want to marry somebody in America. The person doesn't need to come down to Nigeria. You just on the 5G. While she's with her 5G phone, she will appear live where the wedding is going on. And you can just go and be dancing with her shadow. Everybody will be seeing her. But what you're seeing is a shadow. It's not the real person. So she's seeing on her phone. So when you do like this, she does like that. Everything is working real time. 5G. So you can't say, let God come there and talk, come here and talk to me first. I'm not hearing him. So no, the word of God is God and you must celebrate it as such. What I mean to say by what I've said here is, the word of God is the evidence and the reality of God's existence and being alive. If you are a child of God, and the word of God must work for you. You must understand it in this form that I'm saying it. And every time you hear the word of God or you read the word of God, that is God talking to you. And you will react the way you would react if he were to be there present. That's what we mean by celebrating the word of God. Did you understand to this point? So until we begin to celebrate the words of God, we will never reap the benefits. It is wisdom for you to celebrate God's word. Until you begin to celebrate it, you will not reap the benefits. That's why it looks as if it's not working. Until you begin to celebrate it, you will not reap the benefits. We will not experience the power in the word of God 
and we will never see the impact until we start to celebrate it. Don't worry. We will get down to how do we, because we may wonder, ah, Pastor, you're talking about celebrate, celebrate. How do we celebrate? Don't worry. We will get down to that place. But you will never see the power. You will never see the glory. You will never see the impact of the world until you start celebrating the world. You will never see it. You will never see it. What you don't celebrate, you don't institute. What you don't celebrate, you don't institute. For instance, International Women's Day. It becomes something people look up to every year because we do what? We celebrate it. Valentine, 14th of February. It becomes something that has become a norm. Why? Because we celebrate it. If we don't celebrate it, it will never be a norm. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. May 29th, suddenly, for Nigerians, has become a day for handover. Because there is a day that came, we celebrate, and it became, it was instituted. So what you don't celebrate will not be instituted. I don't know if you understand that English. Your birthday means nothing without the celebration. That's why every year you are shouting, telling everybody, it's my bed though. Because if you don't say that, it's like every other day for us. There's not, it's nothing special. Are you getting what I'm saying? Say, my day is 28th. They gave birth to one goat that day too. One goat was born on 20th. So are we celebrating the goat? No. Why is your own not special? Because we are celebrating. See, you know about the birth. That's why they have something like Christmas. So that's the only way we remember the birth of Christ. Because we are celebrating it. So what you don't celebrate, let it be a better way, will not stand. Will not exist. It will just be lost. So when you don't celebrate the word of God, it will not become reality in your life. It is reality because it's been celebrated. You don't celebrate it, it won't be a reality in your life. When I talk about instituting something, that means it becomes a tradition. It becomes a tradition. New Yam Festival is a tradition. You can eat New Yam anytime. But it has become a tradition because men celebrate it. So people look forward to it. It's the time to increase the, yam or the, the price of yam. It is time to increase the, yam or, uh, the price of oil. Christmas. It's time to increase everything. Something that we will naturally buy to Naira in Christmas becomes, they say it's season. They say it's season. Everybody look forward to it. There was a time when I was younger, I looked forward to Christmas clothes. Now, I don't look forward to Christmas clothes. Every day is Christmas for me. That time, my uncle will buy clothes for me. Maybe they buy it October. You will not wear it until December. You will not wear that. You, don't, you will not wear it. How many of you still do that now? You do it. I know you. You do it. Amen. Traditions are very powerful. And they come into existence by celebration. The Bible says Jesus went to his village and he could not do any miracle. Why? Because of the traditions of the people, the word couldn't work. So it's important we celebrate the word of God. What you don't celebrate, I said you don't institute. Number two, what you don't celebrate, you don't establish. What you don't celebrate, you don't establish. Just like prophecies. If they give you prophecies or they, they give you the word of God or they say things to you and you don't celebrate it, I will tell you how to celebrate it. It will never be established in your life. What you don't celebrate will never gain prominence. Write it. What you don't celebrate will never gain prominence. When you begin to celebrate something, it begins to increase, increase in value. It begins to increase in value. Everybody begins to celebrate it. So we began to celebrate Nigerian music and now the whole world is celebrated. It has become prominent. When was the last time you knew the last album released by Boss Two Men? 
boys to men. Do you even know a, do you even know who boys to men is? Many of you, you don't know boys to men. You don't know baby face. You don't know all those people because from the time where they born you, and Nigerian music you they hear, there was a time in this country that only thing you hear on radios were foreign music. Now, so you knew when Ron Kenoli released a new song. You knew when uh, Don Wen released it. Now, nobody. You, I can't, what's the, do you know that Don Wen have a new song right now? You are not aware. Because now your favorite gospel artists or musicians are now Nigerians because Nigerian music is everywhere. We're celebrating it. When you go to parties now, wedding now, and they're playing all those boys, two men, uh, uh, Celine Dion, you just, you just be eating. Say, party never starts. You just be eating. They are just warming the place. But when you hear, ooh, 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 yeah, because that's a Nigerian sound. So what you don't celebrate will never gain prominence. If you don't celebrate the word of God, you will never get prominence in your life. And if you will never get prominence in your life, it will never work in your life. It will never change your life. So wisdom demands that we celebrate it. And what you don't celebrate will never dominate you. What you don't celebrate will never dominate you. You know it like you know it. Your birthday, you know it. It consumes you. It's a part of you. You can never forget it. You plan for it. You, you look forward towards it. Everybody can forget any day, but he forgot my birthday. That's a crime. You say you love me, forget my birthday. That's a big crime. How does love that? What does it have to do with birthday now? Say, because I know day your mind. If I day your mind, you go What's today? Today is Friday. I mean, what's really today? Now, we men, they talk about what's, what's really today? Now, today is Sunday now. No, as in what is today? Today is 12. No, as what, what is today? Well, I don't start. That's problem. What's today? Because that today is either talking is our anniversary. Is a, People say even the, the, the anniversary of the day you say hi. We may remember it. Do you know what today is? What is today? It's Friday. So no. Today was the first day we say hi. How will I remember that? We may remember everything. So it's our anniversary. The day we said hi. Our anniversary. The day you proposed. Our anniversary. <laughs> the first time we went to shop right. Our anniversary. They remember. Women will do anniversary for everything. Everything. But you know why? It dominates because they are celebrating it. It dominates you. What you don't celebrate does not dominate you, you easily forget about it. So, how do we celebrate the word of God? How do we, this is the important part. How do we celebrate it? Now we know when we celebrate it, it will work for us. When we celebrate it, 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 it will feel the impact. When we celebrate it, something good happens. So, it will be wisdom to know how do we do this. Number one, we interact with it often and always. If you value something and you celebrate it, you always with it. Always. If you interact with it always, it would work in your life. If you interact with it always and often, how do I mean by that? You read it, you hear it, you read it, you hear it. How many of you celebrate your phone? Let me show your hand. You celebrate your phone? You don't celebrate your phone? Oh, yeah, everybody come and drop your phone here. Make sure your phone is a good one. It's not a good one. I don't want. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, sure. Start from behind. <laughs> you people even lie in church also. You celebrate your phone. Let me see your hands up. That means that's why you didn't pass in school. I just told you what you celebrate, you inter interact with often, always. Is there any pigeon translation for it? You celebrate your phone now. Answer me. Let me see your hands up. Sometimes you think people know what you're saying. They don't know what you're saying. And they, and they package their ignorance so that you know go do. They didn't understand English. So now they understood it. Oh, you're always with your phone. You hear the ringing in your sleep. Some of us hear the ringing of our phone in our sleep. Chama was saying the other day she came online for the prayer because she heard the notification for her sleep. She didn't know her hear when she was telling her sister. 
Some of you, you can even feel your phone the way you feel picking where they suck breast. As in, you know, a, a woman that is breastfeeding, when the baby is hungry and she's not with the baby, she will feel it on her bobby. Some of you, you feel your phone like that. You are not with the phone, but you feel somebody is calling me right now. And if you check through, through, somebody call you. That's how, that's how naked you have become with the phone. You go to toilet with it. You go everything with it. One of our sisters here, they took her phone one day because she celebrates her phone. We had night vigil and she was coming from night vigil from the axis and she ended keke for night and was pressing her phone and past this place. She pressed her phone past church. Reached Jackpot Junction. I shall say, now the okay came and say, you never reach where you go because if not, for just press that phone like that, reach DAC roundabout. Then she came down and entered another keke to come back, still pressing her phone. And by this account, really, they collect the phone from her. That is how addicted we can be to our phones. That's because you celebrate it. You celebrate it because you value it. The same way you should carry the word of God. The word of God will begin to work for you when you begin to relate to it the way you relate to some of these things. What you don't celebrate, you can't give attention to. Is that not true? You are giving attention to your phone because you value it. God said to Joshua, meditate on this word day and night. Then you will see good success. In other words, what God was saying is, if you play around with this word, always around it, then you will see how powerfully it can work in your life. Day and night, then you will see good success. The word of God must always be in your consciousness if it's going to work. It must always be in your consciousness if it's going to work. This is why God said to the Israelites, tie it on your head, tie it in your hand, paste it on your doorpost, anywhere you go. It, the idea is to make it live in your consciousness. It's going to work. I went to buy an antibiotics for, for, uh, for someone in my house the other day. And they say, you take it for four hours. For four hours. If it's going to work, it must saturate. It must be in your consciousness. Praise the Lord. So you interact with it often. That shows you appreciate it. When you do that, you're celebrating it. Number two. Place value on the things that God said. That's how to celebrate God's word. Place value on the things that God has said to you. Or the things you hear God said. Do not take them for granted. Don't take what God has said for granted. But treat them as important and as a priority. Treat them as important as a priority. If you tell me you love me and I don't take you serious, you know how it hurts you. You say you are taking my love for granted because I'm not celebrating what you said. We value our words like that. How can you not value God's word like that? Don't take the things that God has said for granted. Take it seriously. Make it a power it in your life. Make it important. Place a value to it. Cherish it. Let's look at what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1. New Living Translation says, My child, listen to what I say and treasure my command. Treasure it. King James said, my son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments within thee, 
give me pigeon English. Would they for worry? Pigeon English translation. Everybody read it. Let me see if you know how to read pigeon English. One to go. Don't you like it? My begin, make you learn waiting and they teach you. And no forget. Waiting, I tell you, say, make you do. Place value on the things that God has said to you. Value it. <laughs> One time I traveled and I came back and my children told me that uh, Mr. Ovo told them that he will vanish them. And they took it seriously. They said, ah, Uncle Ovo can vanish somebody. I said, it's a lie. My son said, he can't even vanish you. I said, ah, Coco. <laughs> vanish you. But the children valued what he said. And I don't know the prank he played with them that day. So, <laughs> I was waiting for him then. They came to my mother-in-law place. We are all there. And I brought up the issue. I said, now, Ovo, you have disorganized my children. Now they believe you are a magician. You must vanish me today in their presence. And suddenly he lost his vanish mojo. <laughs> they said, no, no, no. I said, vanish. The children believed it. Another time he told his children that he, 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 he owns police station. You know, some kind some kind things. The children came and they were telling me, my daddy, we own police station. I thought, where? <laughs> they were saying it. Big daddy. My daughter said, your daddy does not own any police. He said, you own police station? No, we even have his picture in our house. That's not a picture. Your papa no own police station. They refuse to believe me. That is value. Children will believe. If you tell them you will buy a aeroplane, they will believe. To tell you how much they believe it, they will go out and tell other children, my daddy said he will buy us a aeroplane by this time tomorrow. And your daddy, daddy can't even buy a spoke. Spoke for bicycle. But the children will never believe you. They value what their father has said. They value what their mother has said. That's the same way. If the word of God is going to work in your life, you must place value on it. You must believe it and guide it. Treasure it. I told you one time, Amdrobas came to where we were living so many years back and I woke up my wife and the only thing she, she could think about was the wedding ring. Arm robbers are in the compound with Karashika, all kinds of God. And you wake up the woman and say, where your wedding ring? Where your wedding ring? <laughs> say she won't go put them for inside the granite you this thing. You see it? Where a man's heart is, is where his treasure is. If you celebrate the word of God, you should place value on the word. Make it of priority. Make it of importance. And I know what I'm saying is not far from you. You understand what I'm saying. You understand how to make something of value, of importance. Do the same and you begin to see the world work in your life. Treasure God's word. Intentionally celebrate God's word by placing value, importance on it and doing what he says. Number three. Ways to celebrate the word of God. Number three, get excited at the sound of his word. Every time you hear the word of God, get excited. Get excited. The same way when you hear the voice of your beloved one, you get excited. When you hear God's word, get excited. Time for the word of God is not the time for WhatsApp. If you are guilty of that sin now, repent quickly. Because I can see some of you were sapping. Time to the word of God is not the time to check the status of people on WhatsApp. Time for the word of God is not the time to Facebook. It is not the time to take call. 
It's not the time to be drooling and be thinking about Sunday rice. Some of you are here now, you are not here. Get excited at the sound of the word of God. Listen to the word of God and apply it in your life with excitement. Listen to the word of God and apply it in your life with excitement. Many do the word of God grumbling. Many do the word of God complaining. No. Be excited about it. We are having early morning prayer. Ha! You're excited. I told you what happened to me the other time. And it, it has happened to someone here. One time we did our, that was when we were doing 21 days midnight program. We have finished doing the midnight program. I was so, I was so looking forward to this stuff that we are finished and I slept. And suddenly, I woke up from my sleep around three. I was like, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I, was, Jesus, I need to go and do midnight program. I couldn't pause. So we wait to. I don't really do one. I woke up looking forward to it. I was, I, I, I was so like, maybe you guys have waited and I didn't. I, I, I forgot I have done it. Hear it with excitement. Apply it with excitement. For instance, giving. You give with excitement. Not complaining. You pay your tithe with excitement. Not feeling bad. Oh, wow, this tight thing, if person no pay at night, they go talk to her back. I for you some bad. No, excited. You are excited to do it. We are doing fasting. You are excited. Oh, fasting is coming. 21 days. You are excited. You are fasting with excitement. Not Baba how far now? Oh, but we did fast. So, person no happy with the fast. <laughs> Swollen face. The Bible says, did you know the Bible says you want to fast? Say, go and take your bath, comb your hair, rub cream, let your face shine. You didn't this is in the Bible. For those of you that would they fast? You have lost the blessing. Would they fast? Do it excitedly. Come to church excitedly. You're doing sanctuary, do it excitedly. Singing and doing it. I mean, they do is a person where they peace for this grand. They not catch you. I go, I go, I go, cut off that way. Take the piece, piece of nonsense. No, do it with excitement. You already know it's a toilet. <laughs> That's how people they clean the toilet. You are going, they are watching you. <laughs> if you clean the thing, go, they will mess them up. That's why you clean it again, right? Right? Tell your neighbor, get excited about the word of God. Get excited about it. Don't complain. God tell you to do something. Don't complain. When we say we are praying or we are fasting or we are going for evangelism or we are winning soul come or we are coming to church, anything we are doing, do it with excitement so that God will bless you. Number four, pay attention to the word. Pay attention to the word. Each time you have the opportunity to be under the influence of the word of God, pay attention. Pay attention. In the book of Proverbs, God says, hey, my son, pay attention to me. Pay attention to what I want to say. How do you feel when somebody is talking to you and they are not, you know, you're talking to somebody and they are not listening, they are doing something else. You feel you are not getting the attention, right? Pay attention. Pay attention. Women understand this. A lady can see your soul through your eyes. There is something about women and looking into somebody's eyes. They want to look into your eyes. They can know if you're lying by looking into your eyes. Close your eyes, woman. Don't look into my eyes. But they have a way of seeing your soul. That's why, have you not noticed it when they are doing marriage? Women are always looking into your eyes. Because they want to know if... That I do, you are saying. If it's full, I do or half, I do. Women has a way of reading a man's mind by looking into your eyes. That's why if your lying has come to that level where they can't see it through your eyes, you don't blow. People can look, some people can look at you like this and lie. Pay attention to God's word. 
part of paying attention to God's word is that like now I'm preaching, you suspend everything and pay attention. You listen to me. You listen to what God is saying. Remember our definition that the word of God is not just the letters, it's not just the sound, it's God speaking to you. So if it is God speaking to you, when the word is coming forth, that's not when to check how much is Bitcoin on. Uh, what's that uh, exchange, please? Is it on the Noah? So many times I know it. They're trying to check. I'm preaching, they're trying to check. That's not when to answer all your call, Victor. That's not when to go out and answer call. Let's go in. That's not when. That's not the time for Solomon to disappear. Okay, Solomon is here. You listen. Pay attention to what God is saying. The word of God is not just sounds and letters. It is God himself. So you need to give him your undivided attention if he's going to bless you, if he's going to walk. The Bible says, and Paul was preaching and discovered that the crippled man was looking at him attentively and he saw that faith has come into the man to be healed. And he said to the man, rise up and walk. And the man walked. These things build. You listen to it, it builds to a point that it causes something to happen. But if you are distracted, it will never build. It will never build. Every time the word of God is coming forth, open up yourself, give it your rapt attention. That means you value it. And then it will, something will jump inside of you. You know, I've seen many preachers preach it, and I think it's true. They say spirit tra spirits tra travel through sound. Spirits, they travel through sound waves. Spirits, they travel through sound waves. That's why you cannot, Igwe, Igwe song can't be your favorite song. Is it not my village song? No. When you're playing it in your house, all the village demons, they follow that song, they enter. They come, they dance for your house. So I don't know why all these spirits, you invited them. Spirit travel through sound. You don't believe it. Ask those who do phone sex. Oh yeah. You can have sex through phone. If you have not tried it, don't try it. But I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I beg, kiss me through the phone. <laughs> they would do. Ah, it's, ah, I feel, I feel, I feel it. <laughs> it traveled to the way, sound wave. That's why you can't play some songs. Some songs will confuse you. Uh, not now, you know, the kind of songs they are playing. Now, when we were growing up, Growing up, over, I don't know, maybe, maybe you know, during your time. The easiest way to get to a woman's emotion is to get a good song. Blues. How many of you know blues? God bless you. How many of you know blues? Because the song, Na Na Ekwe. Na Na Ekwe. Ekwe. My cousin was washing yesterday in the house. And I was passing and she was playing this series of music. I came back and closed the door. I, I went to where she was. I don't get strength for that. I just closed the door. I just feel that song. She's smiling. I just feel that song was not creating the right atmosphere. See, she doesn't know. that All those kind of songs I've never played loud in my house once. Once, I was never played loud, so it sounded strange to me. Where did they play that yesterday? Was it Ruga? Which song with that? You can't remember. Is it Aswaju? <laughs> one man, one time, I brought say he shot a policeman at the bot. Why? Because he was listening to Tupac. He said the song inspired him to see. He was looking for policeman. <laughs> Short police. That's how powerful these things are. 
I heard there's one popular guy. Now, how many of you know it? Those of you that listen to rap, there's a guy called Uzi. Is he? He says he's about the most popular. Do you know that guy is afflicted to the devil? Are you even aware? You're listening to him? There's a part of his song where he said, you're listening to me, we're all going to hell. And you say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you say, yeah, yeah. That yeah, yeah, he said, I've given you a passcode. <laughs> you know where you put where you are giving us passcode. Where you say, yeah, yeah. So the guy is telling you, he's telling you, he's telling you, you be careful what you listen. Spirits travel Travel through sound. Sound. That's why every religion has a sound. If there is no religion that is complete without a sound. They move through sound vibrations. So you don't know what you're bringing into your house most times. When you play some things, be careful what you play. My brother-in-law one time drove me from here to Aguash. And he was playing one song. The guy was angry from the time we left here to reach Ogwas. He was complaining in the song. How he's going to kill everybody, shoot everybody. How he's angry. I called him and said, ah, ah, he killed this guy. He took the verse. Change to something. <laughs> change, change to something. This guy is angry. I'm going to kill them. They might kill me. Everybody's angry. They, so I the verse for everybody. And we will fight. We will kill them. I said, ha, ah, ah. I sleep, I wake up, the guy is still angry. One full album is angry. You become an angry person. The word of God is not just sounds and letters. It's God himself, so you need to give him your undivided attention. And then he will bless you. Number five, and I have two more left. It's seven. Number five, live by the principles of the word. That's how to celebrate the word of God. Live by the principles of the word of God. Practice it. Tell your neighbor, practice it. Don't just be hearing and hearing. Tell your neighbor, practice it. Tell your neighbor, practice it. You know, it was the other day I just discovered that in this church we have how many computer engineers? One, two, Vicky, three. Uh, where is uh, where is that Where where is she go? Okay, she's in the children's room. She too. How many of them? Five. And we have to go and pay somebody to update our laptop. Oh, there's another one here. Computer engineer. No, because where is that? Elect, elect. But you, you you can't tight one knot. Can you? Can you? Can you run one wire? You. Can. Telecommunication. Ngwano, yesterday I was calling your mother. The network was not working. What do we do? <laughs> Telecom. Eh? I should call it. <laughs> you know, because in Nigeria we read a lot of things and we never practice it. The other day I was asking my wife, what is business admin? She don't remember again. She read business admin. She don't remember. Even me, I can't remember what I read. Why? Because I, I'm not practicing it. Of oh, that didn't read for that school that time. Bizard me. When did you read for school? Do you know bizard me? Or is it, or is it just who read bizard me? What is bizard me? In a laugh. Where did be bizard me? Eh? You need a microphone to talk. Huh? Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying? Oh, we read many things that, and you won't blame anybody because these things, we never practice them. We never practice them. We never practice them. How many of you read psychology here? You read psychology? Let me see your hands up. People that read psychology are committing suicide. That's the problem. <laughs> you are supposed to help people who are depressed. Now you are the one committing suicide. What's the problem? Who's going to help you? So the thing is in the practicing. 
is in the practicing. Practice the word. Put it to work. Put it to action. Apply it. Use it. Do what he says. Apply it. Do what he says. Give, it shall be given unto you. Try it. Do what he says. Men ought to pray and not to faint. Try it. When you have a challenge, pray. That shows you celebrate. That shows you believe. That shows you have value for what the word says. Forgive us as we forgive those. Forgive. Don't say, mm -mm, mm -mm. it is God that forgive and forget me. I know that I'm a human being. No, don't say that. The idea is to make you become more like God. Is it not? So you do what God would do. Oh, Mona, God, now they forgive you. If you do me, I will bite you. No. Practice it. That's how to celebrate. You can never know the benefits of the world until you practice it. You will never know. Put it to work. Then you will see the result. My brother-in-law went and bought one Samsung that they say can walk inside water. You know, the other day we went to do baptism and this my phone, they were telling me it can walk inside water. I said, no need. This one, I guess so now. Make her they use them. If water even touch them, they clean and fast. They say, make a trap inside swimming pool. You can't? No. <laughs> but I would never know if I don't try. So the boy buys the phone and he said the phone can enter inside water. And my wife refused him to put the phone inside water. The phone is not my wife's phone. She's not the one that bought it. But she will not let them put it inside. But when you both say, put it inside. The boy wants to try it. My wife said, no, not yet. Because she know how much they bought it. And we will never know. And we never found that till next tomorrow because she never allowed them to put it inside water. How many of you have phones that can operate underwater here? Choma, your own can walk underwater. Where is it? You have phone that can, your own can walk, walk underwater. Emmanuel, please get me that bucket of water outside. We need to try it. See, if, if you don't try these things, how would you know? You need to practicalize this thing. If you don't try it, how would you know? You keep carrying something, moving around. They say, you know, you don't want to try it. Try it. We'll try it today. Bring that bucket of water away they found out. We will try it. <laughs> so, eh? You see, she said, maybe try with my own. Oh, yeah, we will try it together. Go and bring the water. He still doesn't have the faith to bring. You have to test it. Try it. That's the way some of us are. We are not trying the word of God. Say, God will believe you can hear. We'll believe. We'll just believe you is true. But let's. This malaria, book will treat and first. Tell your neighbor, practice the word. You say, tell your neighbor, use the word. Do what he says. Do what he says. Number six. And I have one left. Celebrate the truths. The rema. The revelation. That comes from the word of God. Celebrate it. How? Every time you say glory, God moves. Are you aware? Try it. Shout glory. glory. Every time you do that, God moves. Every time you receive something from the word of God, peculiar to you, celebrate it. Say, Praise God. Glory. You can even dance about it. Sing about it. Just like choirs, they are praised today, second service. They were just bringing out some songs that were awesome. And as you were putting that song, you saw the people's joy keeps increasing, rising. Because it's not about what people are playing. It's about the words that is coming out from what you're saying. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that mean? God is so good, right? Ah, God is so good. What's the other song that they sang? Remind me. Eh? You can't remember the songs. Oh, we got excited. That's one of the things I learned when I was in Christ and Bessie. The, the songs we did, we are celebrating the word of God. From glory. And, and each time you celebrate the word of God like that, you see people respond. There is a, there is a presence. God is taking us. I'm going to dance and praise him. Didn't you see how he moved you? It doesn't matter what comes my way. You are identifying with it. it right there, you're forgetting that there was no money. It doesn't matter. The greater one lives inside of me. You're getting bolder now. His name is Jesus. I am a winner. You're saying, I am a winner. <coughs> More than victory. It doesn't matter. You are so excited. At that point, everything means nothing to you. I rejoice in your going. The energy is so much. Creator of the universe, you're excited. They didn't, they didn't get to start writing songs like that. Pastor Chris taught them how to celebrate the word of God. Not Ige Kweu. Ige Kwe, Ige Kwe Mwa. Ige Kwe, Ige Kwe Gadrom on you. Jesus, no. That's not celebrate. <laughs> That's not celebrate. It makes that, you see, when you sing songs like that, it makes your problem even bigger. It makes your song, song even bigger. <laughs> no, that's, that's, a, that's the song of someone who is defeated already. It's not a faith song. You are not celebrating the greatness of God. You are complaining about your problem. You are complaining about your problem. And that's why some of us started walking some of these songs. We start walking on some of these songs. God Just go straight to what God did. You come and say, my brothers and sisters, <laughs> you, you will not understand what the devil did there. Eh? What the devil did. Hey, if I start from today to tell you what did, even this my hand, the way the devil bent it. Ha! That's not, not the beginning. No. First of all, he started giving me knock, giving me knock, giving knock. It was knock, 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 knock. I was trying, trying, trying to wake up. Hmm. He didn't even stop, stop there. As I was trying to walk, he called, hold my throat. Hold my throat. Hold my throat. Hold my throat. I was trying to say, G, 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 G. He did not even start there. <laughs> 15 minutes. Is he talking about? He beats me. Push, I beat him. Push. He beats me. Push, I beat him. Push. He beats me. Push, I beat him. Push. But I thank God. That I'm here today. I'm breathing. Praise God. What was that? That is not testimony. You have just magnified the devil. You have just glorified the devil. And then you just give God one small part of the what you call testimony. Hallelujah. Are you understanding this now? You take up the word of God. You sing about it. You dance about it. You celebrate it. Those truths, those remas. And finally, you guard the revelation you get from the word of God jealously. You guard it jealously. This thing I've discovered about God. No one is, I'm not ready to let it go for anybody. I've discovered this. I'll stick to it. I'll die on it. I'm not letting it go. That God can heal. I'm not letting it go. What did you think? That because you got a revelation that God can heal, sickness will not come again. No, sickness will come every now and then to try to check if you still believe and that stuff. And you have to keep the gate locked by confessing and saying what you believe. Saying it. That's why Pastor Chris will say, keep saying it. 
Don't stop talking it. For so mightily grew the word of God in Ephesus and prevail. Keep saying it. I told you how I was healed when my, I had this sickness and I was listening to the radio, listening to online radio every day, winners online radio so many years back. And I checked on the internet. Every symptom I had showed me that I was at the final stage of that sickness to die. And then one day I heard Abuye said, when we say we are healed, that does not mean we still don't feel the pains or we still don't see the symptoms. But it's because we have made up our mind to celebrate what God has said. He said, what our body is saying. Then I heard the word of God. God asked me, are you healed? I said, yes. So why are you lying down like you are not healed? So I stood up and I threw away that duvet. And I walked into the parlor shaking. All the pains were still there. Everything was still the way it is. But I went and I started doing what I couldn't do before. And over 10 years here, I'm still here standing. The word of God put it to... One day God asked me, say, when will you start using all these things you're getting? When will you use it? Because you don't need them when we get to heaven. You don't need it. You need them here. When are you going to prove that God can provide? He's here. When are you going to prove that God can heal? He's here. When are you going to prove that God can deliver? He's here. When are you going to prove that God can love somebody? He's here. When are you going to prove that God can help an individual? He's here. It is my prayer for you today that after you leave here, you begin to see the word of God from a different light in the name of Jesus. Actually put it to practice. I told you there are times I put, I just get a good song and I play them and I'm selling pop on purpose. I'm just dancing and praising on purpose. No occasion. I'm the one creating that occasion for myself. Midnight, playing song, dancing. Pastor Chris also talked about you having a, a, a talking section. Talk, talking session, not section now. Where you go to the mirror or you sit alone and you speak God's words back to him and I'm blessed. You speak it to yourself. You speak the word of God to yourself. So I'm blessed. I'm making progress. I'm gaining ground. I'm a success. I will never be broke. If truly that the word of God can transform a man's life, then you should say it. Don't wait for people when people say it. If truly what I'm saying here affects your life in any way, then do it for yourself also. Abby, is it not true? Do it for yourself. <laughs> Be selfish about the word of God. Please write this one down. You know, follow for waiting now, but write it down. Be selfish. What do I mean? Be, Be selfish. Use it. Use it as in use it. Be selfish about it. Use it. Put it to work. Work it. And you will see the benefits. Rise on your feet and let us pray. I don't know if you heard anything. But if you heard anything, now will be the time for you to pray and say, Father, let this thing that I caught, let this thing that I hear from this message this morning, let it let internalize it. Let it walk in me. Go ahead, open your mouth and pray. Let it walk in me. <laughs>